Okay, can't really do any video on the inside. We got the listing agent, the seller, and the seller's like representative of some sort is in there. So I'm not gonna bother them. So I'm gonna shoot everything I see on the outside on this property and kind of go from there. So one of the first things that we see here is we have ivy touching the roof area and it's ivy attracts termites or it's a perfect environment for termites and they love this stuff especially when it turns in the uh, terminates in the soffit area carpenter ants and termites can easily make it into your structure right here so this is something that you always want to trim back and keep off your structure but if you do like it which is fine just make sure you have it treated and uh, keep to keep the uh, termites and carpenter ants away from your structure one of the next things we see all the time is the gutters terminating right next to the structure with no splash blocks. This causes erosion and then a lot of heavy water pouring in the same spot and this condition will actually cause your structure to move. It's recommended for the water to terminate on a splash block or 36 inches away from your structure to cause any settlement or structure, structural failure. Next item uh, that I noticed on this structure, it's a 1977 home and we have newer windows. When you're walking up to your home, the home that you're thinking about buying and you see new windows, that's a good sign that they may have spent money somewhere else or that they've been actually spending money on upgrading the important things on your structure. The next item too, right above the new windows is you see a new roof. Again, on your approach, you see a newer roof and you see new windows, you're like, hey, I don't have to put a new roof and I don't have to replace my windows. What else did they replace on this uh, building here? So really good first start when you have the first impression of new windows and new roof, a new roof. To me as a home inspector, I'm like, hey, uh, my job might be easy today. It's never easy. It's, just, it's fun, actually, it's fun. All right, uh, let's go to the next item. The next item right here is you have stucco, a stucco exterior siding right here, right above brick. And then you have right here, you have no kickout flashing. When you have no kickout flashing, when the wind, when the wall continues where the roof ends, if you have no kickout flashing there, that will allow water to get behind the stucco over a period of time and cause damage. This is a very common find, and this is one of the number one reasons of stucco issues in Houston or just in general is the lack of kickout flashing. Okay, the next item is, this is actually really strange. We have brick, a stucco trim piece, and more brick. Well, because the stucco is dividing the two layers, you actually need Z flashing right here. Codes and regulations have changed several times since 1977. Well, my biggest concern is, as a home inspector, what does it look like today? And it has survived the long time it's been sitting here. I don't see any significant water damage and it is performing. I still have to recommend for Z flashing in place, but say you bought this place and you moved in, you can go off the 40 years plus years it's been up and it is working. So uh, I do recommend for Z flashing to be installed, but it is working today. Okay, uh, hitting the ivy again. Right here, this is a perfect environment for the termites again. We have a constant source of moisture because you have a sprinkler system in place. It's completely covered from top to bottom, so carpenter ants and termites love this stuff. And then also, this is actually kind of, it's close, perfect environment for them. You also wouldn't be able to tell if they were here or not. So this is actually something that, say you moved in, the home inspector lets you know about all the foliage on the outside and that we couldn't see anything because of all the stuff stored on the inside of the car garage say these guys moved out and then they found termites you don't you can't call the home inspector or the termite guy because he warned you that uh that they might be here because it's the perfect condition for them we just can't locate them because we don't have x-ray vision sorry guys i i think i'd be the richest home inspector in the world if i did have that but uh all right let's move on to the next item kind of an easy funny spot there you go duct tape it's, it's the best okay in the middle of making the video joe just showed up he's one of our top producing agents if you need to buy a home joe is one him and his team he's the best but anyways i went over some of the things i found and some people might think those issues are big and i gotta say nothing really scares us anymore i say 1977 this is pretty average or even better 
I would say. Yeah, it's well well taken care of. You know, one of the most important things about having an inspection is to make sure that you know what you're walking into as a buyer. And uh, Chris is awesome, and, and his team is awesome because they do a lot of uh, extra details. Um, and especially one thing I like uh, very much is that they go ahead and send the report very quickly within an hour so we get it soon and so we can begin the negotiation <laughs> process for repairs so that's super awesome yeah yeah I'm working on something to uh -oh. so you can start negotiating those repairs faster uh -oh. I, I've been working on it so it's just it's hard getting someone to design the website but uh, got it but keep an eye out for it um, another reason why you should have your agent on site is because sometimes even though Chris is perfect <laughs> Sometimes yeah. the words that come out of his mouth and get translated by the buyer are two different meanings. I can agree with that. Because Chris is in the business, I'm in the business, we hear things a certain way, and a buyer who doesn't have these reports, who don't go to inspections all the time, may have a different view as a result of listening to it. So it's right. super important. A computer engineer can exactly. understand something different exactly. than what a home inspector right. or a real estate or, professional Or can. It, in your mind, it's not that big of a deal, but some of your word choice ends up making it a worry for the buyer. Right. Yep. And it really is that now the buyer's worried. Right. And so, or it, you are worried about it. Right. But the language in the report doesn't reflect that, and so it's super hard for us to negotiate the seller so to do something. So you're just trying to make sure that the things that need yeah. to be stressed about are stressed about, exactly. and the things that don't need to. Exactly. Need Communication to be is about. super important, right? And being present is all, uh, awesome. Even though I'm wearing a suit, he's wearing a jacket, and it's 90 million degrees out here. <laughs> 90 million. All right. Ah. All right. Let's go uh, take a look at these AC units, and then I'll wrap this one up. Ciao. All right. Catch you on the next one, Joe. Bye. All right, getting back to it. Uh, we got two uh, newer units. They're not brand new, but they're newer. And as a buyer, you don't need to be a real big expert to locate this. You can just look at this unit right here. It's not rusted. It sounds pretty good. Uh, the, it's not vibrating. And you're like, okay, well, the HVAC might be okay. Uh, so, and then also how you can determine the age is if you come down here, it's normally the second two numbers and you can see this is a 2016 and the number divisible by 12 will tell you the tonnage. So we got a 2016 four ton Bryant unit. And if you are still trying to figure it out and you can't, you can actually go to their website. So you just look up the manufacturer and be like, all right, I got a Bryant unit and how do I determine the age? And it's super easy to look up. Uh, so. 1977 we got a 2016 unit it sounds good but one thing we did find on the inside they're not cooling 100% so uh, they probably just need to be cleaned and serviced they're probably right at their maintenance mark they are cooling just not the best all right cool um, I'm gonna close the video out here if you like these type of videos please hit that bell and the subscribe button and uh, I can catch you on the next one all right thanks guys I did my clothes and I forgot to cover the pool. We got two good finds on the pool. Uh, again, as a buyer, it's something that you could probably easily spot. Uh, the first one is gonna be, I looked across the steps and I found a crack. And then the next item is you can see there's a small crack on the deck next to the skimmer and the actual, there's an actual crack through the skimmer. That automatically leads up to, hey, I need a pool technician and you can skip the home inspector on that process. Uh, today we didn't actually even really charge them for the pool we just knocked it out for them anyways just so they can see uh, that we kind of go above and beyond pretty much all the time all right <laughs> catch you on the next one guys see ya